Welcome back to the show. My name is Evan, along with Michael J. Babcock. What's up? Renee Montgomery. Hello there. All right, some big news out of Indianapolis. Uh, we already know that Carson Wentz got traded to the Colts from the Eagles. It was a big deal. They got a couple of, uh, of draft picks for him. Um, and he's going to have a real shot to compete for the starting job. It's not a done deal, but it's, it's you know, he's going to have, a, a, I feel like, a leg up on everyone else considering the success he's had in the past. But there's an issue in Indianapolis, Michael Babcock, because he wore number 11 in college. He wore number 11 with the Eagles, but there's already a number 11 on the Indianapolis Colts. Certainly there is. Evan, second-year wide receiver Michael Pittman Jr., uh, where's number 11? Uh, he was a star at USC. He did not wear it in college, but since uh, being drafted last year, 11 has been his number, and he's he's been pretty good as number 11. He had a pretty solid rookie campaign wearing number 11. Uh, you know, caught a lot of attention with the uh, production he had on the field. You remember he made a couple of clutch plays uh, during their playoff game. He's a stud, man. He really yeah. is. Um, and his father, of course, Michael Pittman Sr., a former NFL player, like he understands – uh, he, look, he's a, he's a pro. He's a real pro with a lot of big, big time potential. And he's got a younger brother, by the way, who's also pretty good. Mike so we yeah. asked him straight up. We're like, look, you're number 11. Uh, Carson's number 11. Is there going to be a war over the jersey number? Like they're, you know, s similar to like what Tom Brady had uh, when he went from New England to Tampa Bay. Remember, because Chris Godwin had uh, number 12 and they ended up working out a situation over there. But is Pittman open to changing his number? Here's what he had to say. So I spoke to him and he was just seeing like how, how like locked in I was to um, 11 and I told him that I was locked in and he was like, that's cool, bro. Cause I'm probably going to switch anyway. He, he asked me um, very respectfully and I just appreciate him for that. Uh, I think that he's a great dude uh, because um, lots of guys with his with his um, status, like they would come in and they would like demand and stuff right. like that. So I just think that he's a really great dude, um, and I get to keep eleven. So uh, it was a win for me. Babcock, you spoke to him for a long time. Uh, is it genuine? Does he really feel like like? Like he's happy staying with number 11 and, and Carson's cool. There's not going to be an issue. Yeah. I mean, you know, he went on to say that he, you know, aside from talking about the number, him and Carson actually talked about working out here in Southern California. So it doesn't seem like there's any hard feelings. You know, I, I obviously also asked if there was a deal to be made and he was like, no, I, you know, I wouldn't feel right taking money from another football player. Renee, so I Renee. think Carson's going to have to find a different number. Evan. it's not going to be 11. Renee, how do you see this playing out? You've seen this a million times. I know you have. Yeah, I'm I'm actually like impressed with how it went down. I do think that Carson is going to just change his number, but a lot of times players do that to show like they're starting over, you know, and so maybe if he could have got the number easily, he would have rolled with 11. But I think for Carson Wentz, I mean, a lot of people are looking at this move as like what's going to happen and maybe he wants to emerge as a new number, new man. I don't know, but it looks like that number 11, he's locked in. Like, for real, you could just tell that he likes his number. And look, I mean, I like 21, so I get it. Yeah, so here's what I think is going to happen. I think everyone's saying the right things, but ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, Carson Wentz has a lot of money. He signed a major contract with the Eagles. I think he's probably cordial with Michael Pittman on the phone because you don't want to get off on the wrong foot. But I think when the doors are closed, he's going to say, look, man, what's it going to cost? You were six in college. You're not, you're not really connected. Yeah. You're not connected to the number. Like I'm connected to the number. So let's make a deal here. I think it's going to be a little bit of a game show situation and ultimately he'll get what he wants, but you never know. I mean, maybe he's, maybe you're, maybe you're right. He wants a, a new beginnings, new number. Maybe he'll go 12, one better than 11. Who knows? <laughs> he was like, that's cool, bro. Welcome back to the show. My name is Evan along with Michael J. Babcock. What's up? Renee Montgomery. Hello there. Oh my gosh, another record sale of a Babe Ruth baseball card. Oh. This one you're looking at right here, a 1933 Gaudi number 149 card just sold for $761,000 at auction on Sunday night. But here's the kicker. It's more than double the price for the highest selling version of this card. So just a couple of months ago, another version of this card, right? Somebody else had a similar card, a, another copy of it, yep. and they sold it at auction for $325,000. That was just like six months ago. And now 
uh, basically the same card from the same collection sold for more than double that, $760,000. Proof wow. that the Babe Ruth market is still on fire. Baseball cards are still on fire. At, you know, at the moment, it seems like the best investment you could make, even better than some stocks and bonds and stuff like that. But Babcock, tell us about this card. This came from a, a very interesting collection here. Yeah, so there's this guy, Evan, and his name, he, he unfortunately passed away at the age of 93 years old, but his name was Uncle Jimmy. And starting in like, like, 60, 70 years ago, he, he started uh, amassing this, this uh, amazing collection of sports memorabilia. And a lot of that was baseball cards. And he would actually, Uncle Jimmy would actually send these cards out to these legendary players and ask for autographs. And they would autograph them and, si and send them back to him. <laughs> That's and so dope. He, he was just storing them in his house, guys. And then when Uncle Jimmy passed away, his family found this, this amazing collection. And since they had been auctioning off some of these yeah. pieces, and like you said, Evan, just smashing records. What's crazy about this is nobody else in the industry knew about his collection. He no. kept it secret, but he preserved the cards so well that experts say it looks like they were printed yesterday. So a lot of these cards, especially from the 20s and 30s, when you see a card from the 20s and 30s, they usually look you know, a little worn out, you know, the color is faded a little bit, but the colors and the condition of the Uncle Jimmy cards are almost perfect. And that's why they're selling for so much money. So this guy, he was 97, by the way, Babcock, 97, I'm sorry, Uncle Jimmy. 97, <laughs> but he left his family with the most unbelievable gift, a multi, wow. multi-million dollar baseball card collection that they're now selling off and their family, they're going to live well, they're for, rich for now. I mean, they are wealth. rich. Yeah. Generational <laughs> wealth here. Crazy. Impressive. Welcome back to the show. My name is Evan, along with Michael J. Babcock. What's up? Two-time WNBA champion, Renee Montgomery. Hello there. All right, if you are a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, you want to pay attention to this. There are a lot of questions going on with your team, including uh, is Ben Roethlisberger going to come back? Is Juju Smith-Schuster, who is a young, talented wide receiver, is he going to come back? Uh, so many questions up in the air right now, but we're going to answer some of those for you because we spoke with Juju Smith-Schuster, the 24-year-old wide receiver out of USC. He's yeah. been pretty impressive since he uh, since he was drafted into the league four years ago. I can't believe it's been that long. Doesn't seem like that long. Wow, I know. He's a star in college and has been a star in the NFL. Yeah, and so look, he, he becomes a free agent, and we ask him like, you know, what's what's going on with you? Are you gonna are you gonna come back and play in Pittsburgh, or are you looking to move on? To another city, you know, maybe uh, to another team that can pay you a lot more than you're getting paid uh, in Pittsburgh. And this is what Juju had to say. Now you're a free agent. Where would you like to go? You're from LA. Can you see yourself in a Rams or a Chargers jersey? Uh, my family, uh, you know, to be home coach family would be cool. But uh, at the end of the day, I want to, I want to, I want to have my legacy in Pittsburgh and retire there. Really? Yeah, I want to leave. Yeah. You started there. You want to finish there? Oh, yes, sir. But you could see yourself in a Chargers jersey, maybe Rams. Uh, nah, not nah, deal. Not right no. now. Until 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 I actually get let go. Other than that, I'm Pittsburgh for life. All right. I think he said all the right things there. Yeah, he did good. That's how you answer that question. You're still <laughs> with the Steelers, so you can't – like, that was a trap question, and he answered it very well. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, he said the right thing. I hope he stays in <laughs> Pittsburgh, too. Pittsburgh is one of, like, the three or four franchise, NFL franchises with the richest history. He has been great for them in Pittsburgh, and I, I hope he stays with them. I, I hope they resign him, pay him a lot of money. Maybe don't dance as much with, in the TikTok, <laughs> but play football uh, I, in I Pittsburgh. Just, I disagree with you, Dan. It up. I love the fact that he dances. I think it's great. Why do you think Are you he kidding me? Of course. They love that he's dancing. He's all their brand is the other all teams over don't like it, though. going viral. Yeah, I love it. And why do you think, you know, he's getting national commercials? Why do you think that's happening? Because oh, yeah. he knows how to transcend the sport. He's doing it, it. It is, but and I feel you guys, and it is great for his popularity. But you have to ask the question: is it hurting his team on the field? No. Not that not that professional football players should need extra motivation. But that said, <laughs> it's clear that he is he is inspired the team that's going but he doesn't him. have to dance on the field i agree and you know he stopped but i'm just saying he better keep dancing i don't care if he dances yeah. in the locker room before he gets out there but yeah. he better keep that dancing brand because it's contagious yeah so what about ben roethlisberger because ben roethlisberger is about to uh you know play his 18th season in the nfl right the guy that's going to throw him the ball who yeah, yeah. Gonna throw juju the ball but the fact of the matter is you know he's gonna he's set to make 19 million dollars in salary and bonuses uh, next season and the Steelers are set to take like a $41 million cap hit if they bring him back. So 
it oh, sounds gosh. like the two sides need to work out a deal to restructure the contract if they want to make space for Ben Roethlisberger. Um, ben met with Steelers owner Art Rooney on Tuesday night, and apparently the meeting went well because Art Rooney issued a statement saying, look, you know, we're both on the same page. We both want to make a deal, but we got some issues to work out with the contract. So we asked Juju Smith, what do you think about, about Ben Roethlisberger? Do you think that he, do you want him to come back and play an 18th season? How do you feel about this? And here's what Juju had to say. You know, I said yes in, in, in the tank. Uh, one thing about Big Ben is that, you know, I have that chemistry with him. So for him to let, for them to even, even let him go or to even think about it, um, it, 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 be, it wouldn't be the best because, you know, I would love to play with Ben. I always tell Ben, give me four more years, but obviously he's a lot older. So right. uh, we'll see how that goes. So you still want to ball with Big Ben? Always. And, and, and you think he's, he could still make it to the Super Bowl next year if you brought, brought him back? Yes, sir. Again, he knocked it at the park. Yes, Juju! These questions are tricky, and you can't really, I mean, you can't talk about the quarterback if you're going to be wanting the ball. So yeah. I am very happy for Juju. He passed the school of media. He killed <laughs> I, it. I, I will say this, though. I will say this, though, Renee. If he really wanted out, right, and we've seen other yeah. people that, like, really want out, and they say, you know what, screw being politically correct. I'm not trying to, like, yeah. keep friends in this league. Yeah. They all say in front of the camera, I, I, I don't want to be in Pittsburgh anymore. I want to yeah. leave. I want to play for X quarterback. I don't know what's going on with Ben, and they're kind of dismissive of it, but yep. the fact that he is publicly kind of saying, I want to be here, I like Ben Roethlisberger, there's got to be some truth to that. I don't think he's lying. I think there's mostly truth in that, but on the other hand, I think what he ultimately wants is to be in a good situation, with a team that pays him a lot of money. <laughs> exactly. And has a quarterback that's going to feed him the rock. Am I wrong? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> AKA Pittsburgh. Yeah. All right, moving on from the disgusting side of sports to the beautiful side of sports. This video is amazing. I saw it this morning, and honestly, it gave me all the feels, all of the feels. It's incredible. There was a rugby team from Fiji that is in Australia gearing up for a, a pretty big tournament. It's called the, the Ron Massey Cup. It's a big deal, but Australia, you know how uh, strict they've been with their COVID uh, laws over there. Everybody who comes into the country has to quarantine. So this rugby team had to quarantine for two weeks at the Sofitel Wentworth Hotel in Sydney. And after the two weeks, they wanted to uh, show their appreciation to the hotel staff that had been taking care of them and, you know, risking their own health to, to care for these, these guys. And so they decided to show their appreciation by standing on their balconies and serenading the staff with an unbelievably beautiful Fijian song. Take a listen to this. Come on, come on. That was Tell actually me you lit. Chills. That was good. <laughs> like, I didn't expect it to be that good, but wow, like they can sing. They sounded like a choir. I mean, they sounded like pro like a no. professional choir to me. I know. Are we sure they're rugby players and, and not part of a choir? That was really, that was great. <laughs> I, I just think it, it was amazing because, you know, there are a lot of times where people just take their situations from grand, especially with yeah. professional athletes. You know, sometimes you don't really get to see them show their, their appreciation for, for people who help them out. And in this particular case, every single person on that team stood out on the balcony and, and showed their appreciation through the majesty of song. And I was just touched by yeah, it. I it, it, it was and it's really awesome because, thing. you know, the, the doctors, the nurses have been getting a lot of the recognition, but people sure. like this, people who work in hotels, people who work in uh, grocery stores, th they're like in large degree, keeping this world moving during a dangerous time. And, that was awesome. No, that was amazing. Like, I didn't know what to expect, but I love <laughs> the new normal now where people are giving people their roses, even like how we're supporting the first yeah. the first responders and stuff. So, yeah, like they were talented. Yeah. I'm really surprised. <laughs> yeah, if, I, if, the, if the whole rugby thing doesn't work out, they got to get on like <laughs> the Fiji version of American Idol or something like that. They got to get going. Fiji, yeah, Fiji Idol, yeah. That's right. <laughs> On 
I'm so excited. I've been wanting to tell you guys for a while, as I'm sure you can know, but yeah, yeah just so excited to be here. I've already talked about Atlanta's my home. So this is like my family lost it. My family lost it. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, this is a huge deal. I, I mean, uh, let's just start at the beginning. So the Atlanta dream, you, you played for them two seasons on the court, and then you, you famously sat out the opted out of the 2020 season to focus on social justice work and other projects. So technically you were under contract with them for three seasons, correct? Correct. Yes. And then there were all of the issues with the the former owner, Kelly Loeffler, the senator from Georgia, who was very vocal about she did not support the league's plan to fold in uh, elements from the Black Lives Matter movement into the 2020 season. And uh, she caught a lot of flack for, uh, for it from WNBA players and, and other coaches and other owners and stuff like that. And at one point you're you're critical of her, but it seems like the two sides, your ownership group and Kelly Loeffler's group, were able to amicably reach a deal where she essentially sold the team to you and your group, and now you guys are in charge of the Atlanta Dream. Is that a correct way to kind of break this thing down? Well, yeah, in a sense of, you know, the the group that I'm with, shouts to Suzanne and Larry, um, it, was, it was really exciting just in a sense of this was my dream that I didn't even know was my dream. And so when I started to see that this could really be a thing, you know, I was talking to them. And one of the things that we always, we, we want to make sure we do is just focus on what we're doing moving forward. You know, there's so much that's happened in the past. And so for me, the main focus is, well, what can we do to get the Atlanta dream turned in Atlanta? And so that's kind of, that's kind of the movement of everyone moving forward. And so it's exciting to, to be a part of that. First of all, congratulations, Renee. I'm so excited for you. I know we've talked about this before. Does this like, definitely close the door on uh, on the playing at least or could you ever see yourself like being like a, a player owner or a player player owner? Player? well we should know before you answer that renee just for the people watching at home renee montgomery yeah. played in the wnba for 11 seasons yeah two-time wnba champion a uh, former all-star and, and you still got gas in the tank i mean we oh yeah <laughs> a lot of it i think no, I think that I can I can still like make a three or two, but you know, you can't you can't be an owner and a player at the same time. It's just a part of like the league rules that you can't do both. And so I hung up my Kobe's officially. They're behind me somewhere, as you can see. I hung them up officially, but for good reason. And so you might catch me at the YMCA getting it lit or the YWMCA letting some fly. But as far as my professional career, yes, I've I've, I've hung them up. So with the Senator Leffler thing, you know, she issued a statement on the sale of the franchise from her group to your group saying, 10 years ago, we stepped up to keep the dream in Atlanta as an important asset for a vibrant and diverse city. It was important for us to level the playing field for women's professional sports. We are proud of what we accomplished and wish the team well in their next chapter. So it sounds like to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the sale, the, the actual deal part of it, there's no bad blood. It seems like it was actually a pretty amicable I, I, I don't know if friendly is the right word, but it all seems positive, right? Everybody yeah. look bad blood or anything here. I think that like to your point, yeah, everyone is really looking towards like, what can we do for the WMBA moving forward? And I right. think like, as you can hear from the statement, that's even what's being said. So that's why I'm excited because we can all just move forward kind of and, and push the dream and not really worry about anything else. And for me, I'm a player that I like for everything to go smoothly. And I'm, I say, I keep saying player, like now I'm not even a player and I keep <laughs> saying player, but I like for everything to go smoothly. And, and that's where we're heading. So what are your plans for the franchise? I mean, I know that you've yeah. thought about this for a long time. You've discussed yeah. it on the show about how you've always dreamed about wanting to be an owner. So I know that this isn't like, Oh, I'm here. I better figure this out. Out. I know you've been thinking about this for a while. So like, what's going to be like your first order of business? What are the achievable goals that you hope to accomplish? You know, the first order of business is make, is like having the Atlanta dream be a part of the Atlanta community. Just as a player, I didn't feel like the community was embracing us maybe because they didn't know us maybe because you know there's we had a lot of movement just in our home arenas and different things and even now you know we're in college park and so i think that the 
community just doesn't know us well enough. So the first order of business is just trying to get ingrained in that. And then second order of business is to get people talking about the Atlanta dream. Um, I'm going to be reaching out to my business contacts, people that I know, uh, professional athletes and other sports and just all different types of influencers and just getting the word out about like the product is already good. So it's more so about just getting people to buy in and see it. Well, I mean, it's off to a good start because I don't know if you saw this, but LeBron James has reached out to you (laughs) on social media and said, quote, so proud of this queen. This is everything we are about. Hashtag more than an athlete. He's been a vocal supporter of yours for a long time. What does it feel like to have LeBron James backing you in this new endeavor here? Well, listen, LeBron James and his team, Adam Adisu, they're the ones that actually got the ball rolling. So, um, yeah, (laughs) yeah, it's crazy. Um, So I remember I was... I had already started to talk to different groups and different things. But when I saw LeBron James tweet, I was like, let me just hit up the fam and see yeah. what's good. And so <laughs> I was, I hit them up and I'm like, yo, I'm just trying to see if y'all are serious. Like, can you like, I'm down to be with y'all or can y'all point me in the right direction? And so they were on it like right away. The more than a vote team, like just they took over in a sense of they got me connected to the commissioner, Kathy Engelbert. And then as soon as they got me to connect it to her, she had the same energy and she was like, what are you serious? And I'm like, I'm dead serious. And so most people, like when they heard how serious I was, they were trying to make sure that it could happen.